so it seems very loving and there's no doubt in my mind that she loves him and I know that and from how I've always seen it he loves her so we are right outside Capitol Reef right now in a uh, free dispersed camp spot Autopsy results are confirming the remains found in Wyoming over the weekend belong to Gabby Petito. As we've been reporting, the 22-year-old went missing while on vacation with her fiancé, Brian Laundrie. He returned from the trip without Petito and has since disappeared. They were friends in high school. They both graduated from Bayport Blue High School in Bayport, New York, and began dating as of March 2019. It just so happened that their friendship rekindled and soon turned into something more, something darker. The relationship was intense and things moved quickly. By July 2020, they were engaged. But beyond the perfect facade Gabby Petito had created for her followers on social media was a much more unstable relationship. Rose Davis, Petito's best friend at the time, remembers this very instability. On the outside, it, he's very charismatic, so it seems very loving, and there's no doubt in my mind that she loves him, and I know that, and from how I've always seen it, he loves her. Um, well, we were supposed to go line dancing. It was ladies' night. And her drive is about 30 minutes to me. And halfway there, she realized her uh, ID was missing. And so it caused a really big argument because Brian just didn't want her to go out. And it was a jealousy issue. And um, it caused a huge argument between them. And she came over and cried and just talked to me about what happened and told me all that she was comfortable telling me. I do believe that their relationship as they kept going on was getting a little, yeah, problematic. I mean, just seemed like there was more and more arguments and everything she did, I feel like, you know, he thought was wrong. But Gabby insisted that they were fine and they wanted to do something fun before the wedding. So they planned a road trip, and for the very worst of reasons, it would be one to remember. Gabby purchased what was going to be she and Brian's vehicle for the road trip in December 2020, a white Ford van which they would later modify. Their plan had been carefully mapped out, a trip to the American West Coast where they would stop to explore state and national parks. Gabby maintained regular contact with her parents throughout the trip, just like she always did and made sure to keep her followers up with what she and Laundrie were doing. Reaching Gabby was easy. After all, she was involved with social media. That is, she was until suddenly she was not. Two months into the road trip, a 911 call initiated by a bystander reported a domestic abuse incident. Inside a white Ford van with a Florida license plate, the caller spotted a girl being slapped across the face. It was Petito. Hi, uh, I'm calling. I'm right on the corner of Main Street by Moonflower. And we're driving by, and I'd like to report a domestic dispute in Florida with a white van, Florida license plate, white land, gentleman, Where's about 5'6", beard. They just drove off. They're going down Main Street. They made a, uh, a right onto Main Street from Moonflower. Or what were they doing? Cooperative, but um, what did you say? What were they doing? Uh, we drove by and the gentleman was slapping the girl. He was slapping her? Yes. Following this 911 call placed on August 12, 2021, the couple's encounter with the city of Moab, Utah's police officers is filmed on a body cam. This footage would end up representing a vital part of what was to become one of 2021's largest homicide investigations. I didn't get that far into okay, it. She so was she was hyperventilating. She's a little saying bit. that they don't drink, but at the point when you put them up, we don't drink or anything. I, she I, started I was, yeah, I was yelling at him, and then when and he turned to like said, I like kind of punched his arm, like there's no just that she's saying like hit the curb. You said it was, it was Gabby. Yeah. 
I'm sorry, I wrote that name. Gabby. Yeah. Quick question. You said you were hitting him in the arm. Did you grab the steering wheel? No, I didn't. You did not touch the steering wheel. Only for like a second because I just saw the lights come on and it was more just like you're an idiot. Like, you know. But did you grab the steering wheel and like no. swerve or anything like no, that? I don't know. Okay. I didn't touch the steering wheel at all. She was already, I don't know what to She was already swinging, man. I was just lost the Yeah. A lot of angles, a lot of nails, a lot of rings. Yeah. You got yeah, three scratches in your neck. You got one on your left side of your head. You got one in your face here. And you got four broken bleeding the couple described their altercation as much more insignificant than what was initially signaled to the police officers. Reportedly, both the male and female reported they are in love and engaged to be married and desperately didn't wish to see anyone charged with a crime. After evaluating the totality of the circumstances, I do not believe the situation escalated to the level of a domestic assault as much as that of a mental health crisis, claimed a Moab police representative. Instead, Gabby was described as confused and emotional. The couple were separated for the night by the police, and Petito slept in the van while laundry was taken to a nearby motel. Five days later, on August 17, 2021, Laundry flew to Tampa, Florida from Salt Lake City. Supposedly, he flew home to obtain some items and empty and close the storage unit to save money as they contemplated extending the road trip. It is unknown whether this was all that Laundry did in his week-long absence. And it is not out of the question that Laundry took some time to create a plan. But on August 23rd, he returned to Salt Lake City and rejoined Petito. Four days later, the couple were spotted in Wyoming, once again engaged in an altercation. Petito was reportedly in tears throughout the couple's entire visit to the restaurant, while Laundry, oblivious to the other people around him, screamed at her. The couple kept going in and out of the restaurant, and Laundry supposedly lost his temper at the restaurant staff as well. On the 29th of August, two days after the couple's restaurant incident, Miranda Baker and Norma Jean Jalovic gave Laundry two separate rides while in Wyoming. Hi, my name is Miranda Baker, and on August 29th, my boyfriend and I picked up Brian at Grand Teton National Park at 5.30 at night at Coulter Bay. Between the couple's most recent altercation and when Laundry was spotted on the 29th of August, there is a complete gap in their timeline. The case suggests that those two days were actually crucial in terms of finding a concrete motive behind Laundry's crisis. Just what were the couple fighting about? And what motive could have possibly led to what Laundry was about to do? By this date, Petito's parents had lost most contact with their daughter. Baker gave Laundry a ride to the Spread Creek dispersed camping area, and from there, Jalovic picked him up at 6.15 p.m., just a few minutes after Baker recorded Laundry exiting her vehicle. The very next day, Petito's family received their final text from their daughter. At this point, it is believed that the couple were in Grand Teton National Park, Wyoming. We would FaceTime, call, text frequently. She kept me updated on this whole trip. Did it start to dwindle? Did her communication start to fade or...? No, not until um, I, re I received a text on the 30th. That was the last communication I had. Petito wrote, no service in Yosemite, and that was it. Her family instantly suspected that the text had not been sent by their daughter, but did not overthink it. After all, even if Brian had texted them instead, it should mean that she was safe, because he loved her, right? But whatever Brian felt for Gabby wasn't love. There are no records of what happened in the days between August 29th and September 1st, but here is our theory. Petito had long been a victim of domestic abuse. Her friends saw it, her parents saw it, but Gabby did not. And after all, she was the only one who could change her own mind. So Gabby stayed with Brian. She was even going to marry him. She stayed with him in spite of his outbreaks, in spite of his threats and possessiveness, and she hoped that if she did better, she could fix him. In many cases, that would be true, but Laundry was deeply unstable. 
recent diary entries which were recovered from Laundry, as well as previous reports on his behavior, suggest that he often lacked control over his actions and tended to make drastic decisions. Gabby fell into the middle of that. Sometime between August 29th and 30th, they started fighting again. Laundry probably hit Petito. It would not have been the first time, but this time he found that he couldn't stop. And soon enough, Gabby, whose only mistake was being trustful, was betrayed by the man she thought loved her, and she died slowly, with Laundry's hands around her neck. But only two days after Petito's final text, Laundry returned to his family's home in Northport, Florida, and Brian was alone. A few days later, the three Laundries left for a campground about 75 miles away from their home. In the meantime, Gabby's family had heard nothing from their daughter. On September 11th, almost two weeks since Petito's family had last heard back from her, and after placing multiple calls requesting the Laundry family's help in locating her, Petito was reported as missing. Northport police visited the Laundry home in hopes of talking to them about Petito's disappearance. Instead, they were met by the Laundry's family lawyer who furnished them the family's contact details. On September 15th, Laundry withdrew over $1,000 using Petito's card after which a search for the man was initiated. The following day, in a letter read by the Petito family, Laundry's parents were urged to help in the search for their daughter. It's scary and heartbreaking. I don't know how to describe it, to be honest with you. We are, we are running out of time, and um, we're scared for Gavin. We think she might be in danger, and we just, we just want him to talk. Just tell us, where, where was she? Where did you leave her? You know, I, I wanted to just know what happened. And uh, I'm, I'm getting angry now at this point, as you can tell. I'm, uh, I'm beyond frustrated. You know, as a mother to another mother, I, I beg his mother to make him speak, or at least for the parents to say something. In response, the Laundries asked police to visit their home the following day, at which time they revealed that they had not seen Brian since September 14th. Five days later, on September 19th, Gabby Petito's remains were found in Grand Teton, Wyoming. It was almost a month later that Petito's cause of death was made public. Gabby was strangled to death. Just hoping that at that moment... And that she was in a place that she wanted to be, looking at the beautiful mountains. It's something you never think is going to... You, you see it... You never, ever think it's going to be yours. It's just, a, it's surreal. A week after Petito's cause of death was released, Laundry's human remains were found at Florida's Carlton Reserve. A notebook belonging to Laundry was also found. A month later, it was confirmed that Laundry had died due to a self-inflicted gunshot wound. He couldn't bear the guilt. On January 21st, 2023, after the contents of Laundry's handbook was reviewed, a passage containing Laundry's tragic confession was released. And again, this is effectively the confession written by Brian Laundry. Quote, I ended her life. I thought it was merciful, that it was what she wanted. But I see now all the mistakes I made. I panicked. I was in shock. But from the moment I decided, took away her pain, I knew I couldn't go on without her. A month later, on February 14th, 2023, the Petito family filed its first suit, which was against the Laundry family. They claimed that Laundry's parents knew of Gabby's death before their son was found and that they hid it from the Petitos. Knowing that Gabby was dead, knowing their son had murdered her, knowing where the body was. The action came as a result of a letter from Laundry's mother found in his belongings. She offered her son to help bury a body. The letter ends with a task for Laundry: burn after reading. The Laundries, however, claim that the letter was written before Petito's disappearance. The conduct has to be atrocious and utterly intolerable in a civilized society. You know, people who are faced with difficult challenges have to make difficult choices. The trial will ensue on the 23rd of August, 2023. The Petitos also filed a second lawsuit this time against Moab, Utah's police department, 
claiming that not enough action was taken to protect Gabby during their encounter with her. Action which could have potentially saved her life. They released a selfie taken by Petito on the day of the Utah evidence, hoping that it wasn't too late for their daughter's suffering to be appropriately acknowledged. The Petito's attorney stated, according to available data, the image was taken at 4.37 p.m., at or before the approximate time of the initial 911 call. But the issue at heart is not solely Gabby's unfortunate story. It is that there are thousands of Gabbies out there, all suffering silently. In response, the Petito family joined Utah lawmakers on January 30th, 2023, as the Senate unanimously voted in favor of the Lethality Assessment Protocol a new law which sees officers obligated to ask 11 questions when assessing possible cases of domestic abuse. If the victim answered in the affirmative to any of the questions, the officers would be obligated under the law to refer them to an advocacy group for support. Gabby's death must lead to change. It shows the consequences of not prioritizing one's experiences and feelings, and the fact that danger could be sleeping in the very same bed you are. On the 18th of March, 2023, Gabby's father posted for what would have been her 24th birthday a reminder to the public that they play a vital role in locating missing persons. He wrote, Gabby would be turning 24 tomorrow, and I'm watching the sunrise. Did this video answer your questions? Did we pique your curiosity? Make sure you check out our other videos to show your support. We come out with regular content based on thorough research. So subscribe to watch the very best there is. And we'll see you next time on The Decoder.